Hi, uh, today's video is going to be a discussion of binomial expansion. Um, binomial is a two-term expression like a plus b, and uh, when we raise the binomials to various powers, they can be expanded by using the uh, distributive property FOIL algorithm repeatedly. It can get a little tedious by the time you get up to the fifth power and higher um, because you'll be doing lots and lots of multiplying and collecting like terms and everything else. Uh, long before we got here, uh, mathematicians actually looked for patterns when um, raising binomials to powers, and a certain pattern on the coefficients started to become apparent, especially to a guy named Blaise Pascal. Um, take for example the row uh, representing the expansion of a plus b to the fifth has coefficients 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And if you look at this triangle, this Pascal's triangle, the fifth row, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. It's actually the sixth row because we start counting at zero. So I thought you should mention that. Um, but the one corresponding to the fifth power expansion. So what's significant about that? Well, first of all, um, these coefficients, uh, rows, can be generated by the row above. So for example, um, the 1 plus 2 equals 3. There's 3 right there. 3 plus 1 equals 4 and three plus three equals six. So you can generate the sixth and seventh and eighth and ninth rows just by adding the two adjacent numbers above. Um, but this has more uh, practicality um, when working with a shortcut so that if I had to expand a binomial to the seventh or whatever power, um, I wouldn't have to build using this triangle to get up to the seventh row. I could just jump straight there. So before I get there, I'm going to point out that um, the uh, other skill that we've been learning is uh, common, combinatorics or combinations. So choosing zero from a set of five, there's one way to do that. Um, choosing one from a set of five, there's five ways to do that, and so on. So this isn't a lesson on the combinations formula, but nonetheless, um, I lay these out so you can see that if I use five choose zero, five choose one, all the way up to five choose five, that these combinations form the pattern that is exactly the same as the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. So how do we use all this information? Well, if I was asked to expand a binomial to the fifth power, I can quickly generate the expansion simply by using uh, combinations for the first part of the coefficient, and then I will have <coughs> the a and the b exist in descending and ascending powers. So first the combinations, five choose zero, five choose one, all the way up to five choose five, and then I'm gonna fill in the a's, and the, and the B's, and the A's have powers descending from five, four, three, two, one, zero, and the B's then would have powers ascending from zero, one, two, three, four, five. The rest of this is just cosmetics. We can just, uh, um, you know, simplify as needed and so forth. So if I simplified five, zero would be one, and this would be five, 10, 10, five, one. So um, now what is this? have to do with uh, the whole shortcut for binomial expansions? Well, this is basically a formula or a template. So if I have this, which is a different binomial, it's not a plus b, it's 2x minus 3 over x, but it's a binomial nonetheless, and it's to the fifth power nonetheless. So using this particular structure, I can get a quick expansion by starting out with the combinations for my coefficient matrix. And then instead of putting in A's in all the first spots, I'm going to put in 2x. And those will all be at uh, descending powers. And then instead of B, I'm going to put negative, keep the negative with the second number, negative 3 over x, and you put those in all the different spots. Once that's done, um, all you have to do is simplify. So 2x to the fifth would actually be 32x to the fifth. Uh, negative 3 over x to the uh, 0 power is 1. So uh, just I'll save you the busy work, but we have the combinations giving us the first coefficients, and then we have the powers giving us another part of the coefficient. So what you can see on this row is the 2x to the 5th was simplified, the negative 3 over x to the 0 was simplified, 2x to the 4th simplified, simplified, simplified. So all you do is just basically do the exponents for each of those terms, and the rest is collecting like terms. And in the end, we have a full expansion of 2x minus 3 over x to the 5th power. Notice, if you do this right, you are going to see a, um, an arithmetic sequence in the progression of powers. 
In this case, we have five, three, one, negative one, negative three, negative five. So the powers are dropping by two every time. So I know I didn't make any mistakes with my powers operations at least. Okay, so that's just the general way to expand. Again, you can use this structure for a fifth power binomial expansion. If I have sixth power, I will have seven terms, and we'll have combinations from six choose zero all the way to six choose six, but the same process would apply. More commonly, um, we are asked questions that don't ask you to do a full expansion. For example, this is 11th power. Even the 11th power expansion is gonna have 12 terms in it. That's a lot of busy work, especially on an IB exam or some other standardized test. So to make this work more efficient, um, the authors of these test problems ask the questions in slightly different ways. Here's an example. It says, there's a situation where 11 choose A is equal to 11 factorial over A factorial times 9 factorial. And the question is, what's the value of A? To do that, we simply have to remember that N choose R is the formula N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. Substituting in value for N, Wherever I see 11, I have 11 here, so that's 11 factorial. And then somehow or other, this became 9 factorial. And I'm thinking, well, what is this right here? Well, it's A factorial. So my job is to consider what's supposed to be here for A. <clears throat> well, if N is 11 and this is 9, then this one's going to have to be 2. Because I don't know if you noticed this, but the two numbers on the bottom, when you add them up, will always equal N. So I know that A equals 2. Another way to look at it is 11, or sorry, 11 minus a should be equal to nine because there's a nine right there. So we have 11 minus a equals nine. That means a equals two. Again, it could be obvious. Now that I know that a equals two, I'm going to find the coefficient on the term that has x to the ninth power in it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna take x plus three to the 11th power. We're gonna let a equal two, which means I can hone in on just the term that has a equal two on it. The reason I chose a equal two is because of this word here, it said hence. I'm gonna assume that I'm using the number a in my combinatoric, and that's why I just right away said, well, let's just let a equal two, and hope, which I know it's gonna happen, that I'm gonna get an x to the ninth. And you can see here, x to the 11 minus two, that's x to the ninth, I win. So all that's left is to find 11 choose 2, which turns out to be 55. And 3 squared is 9, so we multiply 9 by 55 and we get 495. That is the coefficient on x to the 9th. So I state the coefficient. And just to make sure, I put the binomial into Wolfram Alpha and I got the full expansion right away and I just verified that the coefficient does indeed match. All right, the video's getting long, but uh, um, I wanna at least lay this one out. If, you, uh, if I'm going too fast here, uh, feel free to just stop the video and just look at what's displayed after I get everything up on the screen. Um, but in this problem, uh, we are expanding another strange looking binomial. It's got three x squared minus k over x to the ninth power. k is a positive number, and it says that the coefficient of the term x to the sixth is 6,048. What would k have to be? Uh, it seems really complicated, but I'm just going to simply just state the general term for a ninth expansion would be, uh, we can go from zero to nine for our R values, nine choose R, and then three X squared to the R, K over X to the nine minus R. So this would give me all 10 terms in the expansion here. To find the X to the sixth term, I'm going to take this general term, and just focus on the x's themselves. So I bring the x's together and I apply the product rule and get that the power on x is three r minus nine. And I want that three r minus nine to equal six. Therefore, a little bit of algebra, three r minus nine equals six, r equals five. Now I know that r equals five is the key to finding the coefficient in terms of k. So I use five for my r value, play it all out and I get this, these numbers right here. In the end, I have 30,618 K to the fourth, X to the sixth, and that's supposed to equal 6,048. That's the coefficient that was given on X to the sixth. So this whole number, including the K to the fourth, has to be equal to 6,048. Simple algebra and you get uh, K equals plus or minus two thirds. I go back over here, I'm reminded that K must be greater than zero, so we're gonna say only keep the positive one. 
Turns out that it's actually true if k is negative or positive. I just wanted to test that here, and it turns out it works too. So I hope you found this informative. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.